Competitive games are really popular. And I mean, it makes sense too. Historically speaking, humans love to compete and games allow us to do that competition without the loser actually having to die. But it kind of seems like some people didn't quite get the whole memo about the you don't die if you lose thing. Sweats, referred to in some dialects as tryhards, are people that play competitive games like their lives depend on it. They have no honor, they don't care about having fun, and they will literally close and uninstall the game before losing. But I'm not here to complain about sweats. That's like complaining about clouds in the sky. What I'm actually interested in here is the second thing I said. Most sweats don't care about having fun. Having fun is like the actual point of video games. That's literally what they're designed to do. So why would anybody choose to play a game in a way that means they don't have fun? Why are you playing a video game like you're trying to feed a wife and kids? If you wanna be bored for a few hours, go work a nine to five. Why would you choose to suffer like this? Well, I actually think I know why, or <laughs> at least I have a theory. I've done extensive research. You know, I've played all types of competitive games, some professional and some casual. It's actually not that far of a stretch to say I've kind of become a sweat myself. <laughs> <coughs> Anyways, I've come to the conclusion that there are three major reasons as to why people choose to sweat over having fun. And I'm gonna reveal them one by one in traditional video essay fashion. All right, so let's get into this. This is the psychology of sweating or something else if I change the title, which I hope I don't, I probably will. It's kind of a reason number one, the art of subtraction. There's a famous quote by Soren Johnson that says, given the opportunity, players will optimize the fun out of a game. Sweats are players that love to optimize, but there's nothing in optimization that necessarily requires you to throw out fun, is there? It just so happens that in most cases, fun is in direct opposition to optimization. For example, scythes. Scythes are in the top five coolest looking weapons in existence, even though they're technically farming equipment, but who cares? They've got a really long handle and an even longer crescent shaped blade, peak design. Just looking at one makes you wanna like cut through a large horde of fodder enemies or something in a big arc, or like inflict lots of bleed damage or something. Unfortunately, scythes actually really suck in combat. I mean, the cutting edge of your weapon is pointed towards you. Your blade literally curves away from your enemy, and the long handle just makes it really hard to swing. The same aspects that make the scythe cool also make it terrible in combat. And it works the same way in games too. For example, if you wanna add a little more weight to an attack animation, you give it a nice period of wind up before the attack, and then a period of overshoot after the attack. The problem is that if you could see all that really cool stuff before the attack, so can your enemy. A hypothetical opponent would be able to see what you're doing before you do it and just move out of the way before your attack lands. And overshoot is even worse. It's just extra time where you're locked into an animation and can't do anything. Your enemy can get like free hits in or something. They can heal, they can reposition, all that stuff. Which is exactly why enemy moves usually make heavy use of both anticipation and overshoot. Enemies, and especially boss movesets, have to be both cool to look at and fair to beat. It wouldn't exactly be fun if every enemy animation canceled on you 15 times in a row, but it would be optimal because optimization is the art of subtraction. It's doing the absolute most you can with the least cost. And in most cases, all fun is, is an unnecessary cost. But like I was saying before, it doesn't always have to be the case that optimization has to get rid of fun. Some games are designed in a way that bakes fun into optimal play. Like for example, Ultra Kill. Ultra Kill is an exceptionally designed game. And that's coming from somebody who doesn't even know anything about game design. Hits are meaty, movement is fluid, and kills are ultra. <clears throat> Relevant to this video though, Ultra Kill has a very quantitative style ranking system that not only plays into your final score, but also your current gameplay. Ultra Kill literally lets you optimize being cool. And if you're not being cool enough, then you regain health slower and you might lose. So you know what? I think that sometimes fun is worth it, you know, right? Like personally, I don't care if size suck in combat. I still wanna use one because they're cool. And just because they're bad in combat doesn't mean they're unusable, right? Like if I was in an alleyway 1v1, I'd rather have a scythe than not, you know? It could still get the job done better than nothing. Unless my opponent had like a gun or something. Reason number two. Game theory. You're going into a deathmatch. 
Before you enter the arena, you're given the choice between taking a scythe or taking a gun. You know that taking the gun will probably give you your best chance of survival. But lately you've been concerned about Deathmatch viewership, and you worry that taking the gun will make the fight too boring for the viewers. So you take the scythe instead. You open the door to the next room, and a 120 gram massive lead moving faster than the speed of sound intersects your brainstem. You're dead before you can even take your first step. Your opponent shows gun. The meta is a gaming term that allegedly stands for most effective tactic available, although that might just be made up. The meta is pretty much the best way you could play a game. That's what the gun represented in the, in the analogy, and the scythe represented like anything that's not the meta. Lots of games have popular metas, most of which are notoriously annoying for anyone else playing. Like, for example, in Elden Ring, I remember that bleed builds were the meta for a while, and people would endlessly complain about how annoying Rivers of Blood users were. And they were so annoying because there was nothing you could really do to counter it. You just bleed to death. Which brings me back to my analogy. It doesn't matter what build you're using if you bleed to death in four seconds. Just like it doesn't matter what cool weapon you bring into the deathmatch if 20% of your gray matter is ejected from your skull at a range of 500 feet. Except, of course, there is something you can do to stand a chance in both scenarios. In a world where a meta exists, it is always in your best interest to use that meta if you want to win. In game theory, this is called the Nash Equilibrium, the state of a game where neither player has any incentive to change their choice. The existence of metas in competitive games basically raises the difficulty floor for everybody playing. You either have to evolve your strategy or just lose forever. And of course, the end result for any evolving strategy is the meta because it's the best you can get. And if you evolve a new strategy enough to beat the meta, then all you've done is create the new meta. It's kind of like poetic or something. I forgot to record the reason thing for this one. So this is reason reason three, uh, nerds. It's, it's cause they're nerds. That's reason three, okay. Speedrunning is the art of finding the fastest way possible to complete some goal in a video game. That goal is usually winning, but it can also be something like finding a certain item, or killing a certain NPC, or even dying. Speedrunning, just like sweating, is all about optimization. But when you sweat in a multiplayer game, you're rewarded with like a higher win count or something. Most single player games don't reward you for playing them fast because the devs usually don't intend for you to play that way. I know there are sites like speedrunning.com and stuff that offer a way for speedrunners to compete with each other, but you cannot look me in the face and tell me that someone who sits down and replays the same game over and over again just to shave off a single second is only playing for the leaderboard. Just like how you can't tell me that someone who sits down and meticulously trial and errors their way through a list of items to find the most optimal build doesn't at some step enjoy the process a little bit. There are some rewards that have to go beyond competition. There is satisfaction to be had in shaving off that last second or squeezing out that last point of damage. The satisfaction in knowing that the strategy you're using is the best there is. And this isn't even an untapped market. There are games that specialize in letting players optimize stuff. Factorio, Oxygen Not Included, and I would even argue modded Minecraft. This stuff is like objectively not fun. Why would I want to roleplay as a project manager on my time off? Like this stuff is realistically just work. For example, there's this Minecraft mod called hex casting, right? It's a magic mod and it has all these cool spells, you know, you can fly around, you can break blocks, you can explode enemies and stuff, you know, cool stuff, pretty fun mod. Except for the fact that you have to make your spells yourself. And I'm not talking like a GUI where you're just dragging the spell component. No, you have to code your spells pretty much from the ground up and you don't even get the luxury of typing in the code. That would be too easy. You have to draw your code. Each pattern you draw does a different thing, and that's all documented in the book. Some patterns, usually the ones that have a spell effect, cost something called media, which is amethyst in game, and acts as your fuel or your mana for your spells. Hex casting is a pretty open mod, so there's lots of different ways you can do the same thing. And for that reason, there are endless ways to optimize things in hex casting. And I think that's kind of what makes it fun, at least for me. Let's say I wanted to make a hex that constantly deflects projectiles in range. I could of course just scan every projectile around me and deflect them directly, but that means I waste mana on projectiles that are in range but aren't gonna hit me. 
So I'd have to program a hit detection system using math so that I can only target arrows that are going to hit me. All right, but I can still optimize the deflection itself. Instead of spinning the mana needed to fire the arrow back at his target, I'll just spin half that amount to slow the arrow down so they get stopped just short of, of you. Or not exactly, exactly stopped, but, but the, the closer, closer they get, get, the slower, the slower they go. go. But even then, that's too expensive. In order to be optimal, what if I don't even bother negating the projectile's motion? I can just course correct just enough so that it barely misses me. See, the math actually all checks out. I made this demonstration in Desmos in order to represent just how simple, this is like textbook nerd stuff, okay? Just reading that part out, I felt myself being magically pulled toward the nearest locker. And I didn't even make that stuff for this video. This mod is the reason it is taking me so long to make this video. Anyways, back to the point. With hex casting, you can always find a way to improve your hex. Hex is what we call spells, okay? If you're, if you're in the know, it's what we call spells, you know? <clears throat> and hex casting has a fairly active community where people optimize stuff all the time. So if you wanted to find like a super optimal 100% effective combat hex, for example, it exists. You can just copy it off the form. I'm sure someone's made a 100% effective deflection hex, but I haven't even looked because that defeats the point. The enjoyment of hex casting comes from the problem solving and optimization aspect. Even though most sweats don't care about doing things themselves, high level competitive strategy simply would not be possible if there weren't any super sweats to support the food chain. All right, so to recap, people sweat in video games because of certain design decisions that disincentivize fun ways of playing, because of metas that are so strong you need to sweat to stand a chance, and for some, because people like the satisfaction of using a well-tuned strategy. That's it, that's, the video's over, yay. If you saw my last video, I just wanted to say thank you for all the support, you know, like the usual stuff, but I, I really wanted to, <clears throat> to say this, okay? <clears throat> Noita is a magical action roguelike set in a world where every pixel is physically simulated. Noita was first released in early access in 2019 by the company NOLA Games. Thank you for your time and good night.